local all morning. The Fox 61 morning news starts now. Good morning. Weather watch alert as we await a sloppy afternoon full of snow and heavy rain. We'll time it out for you coming up. Plus, we're going to share how crews all across our state are working to help keep the roads safe for this latest round of winter. Plus, people across our state remembering those lives lost in the tragedies in Half Moon Bay in Monterey Park, California. First at six, we begin with a weather watch alert. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, I'm Erica Arias. Good morning, everybody. I'm Angelo Bavaro in for Tim this morning. Clear right now, dry, no issues to report walking out the door, but later today, you can expect that to change in just a few hours. Yeah, it is coming. Yep, here's a look at that live radar. You can see that system pushing towards us. Let's get right over to meteorologist Matt Scott, who has more details about the timing, what we can expect. Yeah, yeah good morning. Break it down. Yeah, do not be fooled by what you see outside today. Right now. This morning, very different than what we're going to see later on this afternoon. Good to have you along in the 6 o'clock hour. Weather watch alert in effect for today into tonight. And it's not just because of snow. We're looking for, I think, uh, the bigger issue may very well be the rain. Heavy rain that changes over this evening uh, may lead to some isolated flooding. A lot of rain in a short amount of time. There's a lot of energy with this. Right now, we're okay. 33 in Hartford. 37 in New Haven. Sorry, Shoreline. It's just going to be likely uh, rain with some snow mixing in there. But temperatures under 30. Two in Torrington, Waterbury, Meriden. We're at 33 right now in Hartford. Cloud and radar picture is quiet, but here comes the snow knocking on our doors, filling in quite nicely across central parts of Pennsylvania. That is just the beginning. Strong storms over the last 24 hours down south. We get this energy, though, kind of this part right here will be pushing on through. So I don't think it's going to be severe, but I'm not ruling out thunderstorms either. Nine o'clock in the morning, cloudy. By noontime, we'll see a couple of flurries, but then the snow really fills in from southwest to northeast around three o'clock. That'll be good for an inch or two of snow quickly. But as we go into the late afternoon into the evening, you're going to see around dinner time a quick changeover into some heavy rain, and that's the way we'll keep it till about midnight tonight. By tomorrow morning, we are quiet yet again. All right, there's going to be numerous early dismissals today, so we adjusted the ride home to about 1 o'clock. 31 and cloudy, snow showers developing just about after lunchtime. If you do have a full day of school, and I think inland parts of the state, it's not advisable to get those buses around by 3, 4 o'clock. It's going to be sloppy. We'll talk about that. Time it out for you. Have a look at the weekend, too. It's all coming up, guys. Back to you. We'll check back in, Matt. Thank you so much. Well, as you mentioned, winter weather rolling into our state later today. Expected to make a mess, especially for that evening commute. Yeah, so we're checking in with Fox 6 with Brooke Griffin. She's live in East Hartford right now, where state crews are out there. They're getting ready to keep you safe out there. Brooke, good morning. Uh, good morning to you both. The Connecticut Department of Transportation says they've had a pretty busy week. First with that wintry mix on Monday, a little bit of calm yesterday, but of course now heading into today's snow and wintry mix event yet again. Now, just a few hours from now, maybe less, they're all going to be out here at one of these big salt piles in East Hartford. They're going to be filling up those trucks and hitting the road. They say their main goal today is to keep each and every one of you safe. Now, winter hasn't made much of an appearance so far this season. But it's finally trying to make a comeback this week, or so it seems. Today, the expected snow to rain event will begin in the morning and then taper off through the evening, but not before causing a messy drive home for most commuters. You just heard it from Matt. He was talking about how early that's going to get started for some of you. CTDOT tells us they will have hundreds of crews running through the state in plows and salt trucks, making sure the roads are safe for drivers. Now, they say as long as people take it slow, they'll make sure to do their part as well. Local stores like the True Value and Weathersfield have also prepared. They tell us they've had plenty of shovels and salt for two years, but the lack of snow has left those items mostly on their shelves. And we thought we were going to get more storms, so I vamped up and got ready for that. So I have all last year's stuff, and this year I vamped up and got ready for last, this year, doubled down, and basically nothing. 
He tells us that yesterday morning they were finally busy and seeing that snow rush that they have been wanting. He says they were busy for several hours, but he says there are still quite a few left over if you do need to go get some of those last minute supplies. One thing to mention, Matt already said it. We're going to be talking about it throughout the rest of the morning. If you can stay home or maybe get home a little early today, maybe go ahead and plan for that because it is going to get dicey around three o'clock. Even with CTDOT doing everything they can, it's still better to be safe at home. Live in East Hartford, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61 News. All right, Brooke, thanks so much for the update. And as our state gets ready for the storm, make sure that you have the Fox 61 News app, the weather app and the news app. If you don't have it already, you can get the very latest radar and forecast anytime on your device. Scan that code right there and that's going to help you easily get the app. The good news right now, no issues to report as you walk out the door. Hopefully that is the case on the roads as well. Lauren Zenzi here to break that down. Good morning. Good morning to you, my friend. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully everyone is having a good day so far. Yeah, Angela was right here in the traffic department as of right now. Things are actually looking really good. No crashes or incidents to report as we take you out to our Hartford drive times as of right now. 9184 Route 2 all moving right on schedule. Things are looking great in and around the capital city. Oh, it's a little frozen right there. Uh, as we take a live look at our drives, uh, we're seeing a lot of green in the state. 84 over in Waterbury looking good. Meriden all the way down into New Haven on I-91, actually in both directions moving smooth. New Haven all the way over into the Bridgeport area on I-95. Things are looking good. And then as we hit the Bridgeport to Fairfield area, that is where the delays start to ramp up. As we see, New Haven is moving smooth. Some very light volume out on I-95. But then as we hit Fairfield, Bridgeport into Fairfield, on the southbound side of I-95, we're really seeing that heavier volume start to pick up, which is normal around this time. Just give yourself a little extra time to get where you need to go. We'll check back in on the roads with any incidents, crashes, or construction, any concerns coming up in the next half hour. Angelo. We are following some developing news out of West Haven this morning. Crews there are working to fix a sewer main that ruptured last night. That break happened in the area of Chestnut Street and Savin Avenue and is impacting homes in that surrounding area. Now, if you do find that sewage has entered your home, West Haven officials ask that you call the water pollution control plant immediately. Chestnut Street is closed as crews make those repairs. And right now that break is also impacting several neighborhoods, including Beatrice and Jesse Drive's Ida Lane, Painter Drive, Hilltop Lane and Michael Drive. Happening today, a man accused of killing seven people in the shooting at the two mushroom farms in Half Moon Bay, California, is expected to appear in court. Authorities arresting the 66-year-old suspect and charging him with seven counts of murder. Police say he worked at the mushroom farms in the past. Officials have not released the names of the victims killed. And last night at the state capitol, people gathered for a vigil in memory of the victims in Half Moon Bay and in Monterey Park, California. It was a time for mourning and also reflection about the attacks on the individuals with the Asian American Pacific Islander community. Um, I hold back tears daily because I think about my parents. I think about them not feeling safe going out. We're not going to let the hateful and the violent take that away from us because we are stronger than the hateful. And that is why we will never yield to fear. Another topic that was addressed at the vigil last night was mental health and the breakdown of the stigma of asking for help. Happening today in Rocky Hill, the Office of the Chief State's Attorney is expected to announce the launch of a regionalized human trafficking recovery task force. More details on what this task force will do to help victims of human trafficking those are expected to be discussed at 9 o'clock this morning. And also happening today, we're expected to learn more about Connecticut's Health Information Exchange, or CONI. That allows patients and healthcare professionals to securely share and give access to a patient's medical information electronically. Lawmakers and health officials are expected to speak more about that program at 10 o'clock this morning. Also happening at the Capitol, lawmakers with the Reproductive Rights Caucus are going to announce that they're focusing on this session, what they're focusing on. The caucus has about 40 legislative members and was created last year. 
in response to the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Our caucus members will announce their legislative priorities today at 1030 in the Legislative Office building. For anyone expecting hero pay for their work during the COVID-19 pandemic, payments will begin going out February 1st. More than 150,000 Connecticut essential workers will get up to $1,000 in relief. Comptroller Sean Scanlon says he's grateful for those who stepped up to keep our communities going. All of these people who we called heroes, we can never repay them for the work that they provided for us during COVID. But this is the least that we can do to say thank you to the men and women of Connecticut who we called heroes, our essential workers. And beginning next week on February 1st, they will begin to get the least that we can do, which is the thank you of the premium pay program. $20,000 in payments will be made each week in the order that applicants were submitted. Now at 6, the Willard Correctional Institution in Enfield is set to close on April 1st. Officials say that decision comes as the state sees a decrease in the prison population. The 260 inmates and 71 employees there will be relocated to other facilities in the state and no layoffs are expected. That closure is expected to save taxpayers nearly six and a half million dollars. Three people are without a home this morning after a house caught fire in Warren. Take a look. The Bantam Fire Company says this happened just after 730 Monday night. We're told that fire started in the kitchen. Thankfully, though, nobody was hurt. Crews worked for more than four hours to get this fire under control. The Red Cross says it is helping the three people who were displaced.